Well, that's none of your goddamn business. Now is it? Hi boys and girls, Nanya here. It's Friday, another weekend is upon us. So what have you guys got planned for this weekend? During the week I finish work at 7pm. We've got a curfew at 9pm, so I've got two free hours a day. So usually when I finish work, I'll one night I'll go for a walk with my wife and I'll take the dog. And the next night I'll go for a one hour to one and a half hour bike ride. I first met my friend Jazz Seabee. Actually not the first time I met him, the first time I saw him was actually on the news. If you search his name you'll you'll see the video clipping that I'm talking about where he was stopped at the border for not having a permit. He did a speech the other night. So I'm going to play the speech to you. Tell me what you think about it. And uh, after that, I'm going to play you one of his uh, songs. When I received this call two days ago to be a guest speaker at this event, my first thought was, you're kidding me. Two days, that's not nearly enough time for me to prepare. See, I've never really given a speech before, and if I was to give a speech, I would damn sure need more than two days' notice. I would need two months. I would need that time to study and to contemplate, to write and to rewrite. I would need that time to make my wife suffer presentation after presentation until finally after multiple sleepless nights and countless attempts, I would produce something I deem presentable in such a situation. But you see, time is a luxury. It's not a choice that I was given. It has long been said that true happiness can only be found in the servitude of others, that only once we start to put the well-being of others above that of our own comforts can we experience true freedom. This is a concept I have applied and proved true in my own life. Is it a, com is it a concept that has helped me to become a better husband, a better father, and a better man? It is the implementation of this concept that has me sitting before you here today. We are living in what has undoubtedly come the most important time in modern history. While the majority of our people are asleep, lost in a maze, built upon lies and propaganda that has been handed down to us by our satanic overlords, through our institutions, our governing bodies and our media outlets, the actions that we take now, in this time, are destined to be vital, not only to the future of our nation, but to the future of our race. We are not offered the luxury of time to sit idly on our hands while our people are murdered, stripped of their freedoms, while they are systematically replaced of their own countries, lose their lands. We cannot afford these issues that are ours to fall unresolved on the shoulders of the next generation. We must secure the existence of our people and a future for the white race. 14 words. And although these 14 words have been twisted and manipulated in a futile effort by the powers that be to turn them into something sinister, the truth of them remains quite clear. It is something that, something that resonates deeply inside each Aryan man. The truth that those 14 words do not represent hate or fear, but rather they represent love and duty. A duty that our people have understood and taken pride in for thousands of years. A duty that each and every one of us is bound to by blood. It is a duty that we must strive to achieve. It is also a duty that is bound to servitude. We live in a world that is plagued by misinformation and half-truths where lies and historical fabrications are sold to us as gospel. We are told men can be women, gay is normal. We are told that weaknesses are strengths and that victims are heroes. Our women are taught, to be, our women are taught that empowerment is being a whore, leaving the state to replace fathers that have been humiliated into submission. This, coupled with the constant chaos that surrounds us, has left many of our people feeling lost, bitter and alone. They have become morally corrupted, losing sight of some of the basic truths that help make our culture a shining beacon of light to the rest of the world. The basic commandment that was handed down to us from God, the commandment from which all others stem, to love thy neighbour as thyself. A simple command, yes, but here again, we see a, con a concept that has been twisted and manipulated, watered down so that Although many of us know these words, very few of us are actually aware of the importance they hold for those walking the path of destiny, for those bound by blood to those 14 words. 
For years, we have witnessed the church take that command and use it to send missionaries to the other side of the earth while neglecting the needs of their own tribe. We have been told that love thy neighbour means to love every man, regardless of their location, their beliefs or their actions, but this simply isn't true. Love thy neighbour could more easily be summarised as love your tribe or love your people. We must also let go of the misconception that life is fair or just, one of the basic principles of leadership, whether you're the leader of a country, an organisation or simply a household. Is it is your responsibility first and foremost lay with those people whom you lead? The world is unjust and there will always be suffering. The job of a leader is not to alleviate that suffering, but rather to make decisions that ensure that it is the people that follow them that suffer the least even if that comes at the expense of others. So where am I going with this time, servitude, love and leadership? Most of you watching this will already have a solid understanding of the history of our people. Most of you will already know or already be well versed in the issues we face as a race. Most of you know who's responsible. Most of you, just like me, are bound to those 14 words. But our window of opportunity is coming to an end. We no longer have time to argue and bicker online over an endless array of topics. We no longer have time to condemn our neighbours for their pitfalls or their lack of understanding as we may see it. We no longer have time to procrastinate and wait for someone else to take up the tasks that have fallen to us. If we're truly committed to securing the existence of our people and the future of the white race, then we must start putting the well-being of our people over that of our own comforts. We must be proactive and aggressive in pushing these conversations. We must let our virtue and dedication stand as an example to those around us. We must spend time actively involved in our community, embracing a spirit of servitude and love, so that the wisdom and knowledge we have acquired is not wasted, but rather used to inspire others to follow in our footsteps. True courage is shown when people are willing to get out of their comfort zone. Love is shown in their willingness to sacrifice, and strength is shown in the act of doing so. In today's world, the traits of what makes a good man have been greatly distorted. Now, a man is more often respected for the amount of people that he's hurt rather than the amount of people that he's helped. Arrogance and selfishness have replaced humility and kindness. Self-preservation and the desire to possess material objects have destroyed our community spirit. It is important that as Aryans, we remember that it was our love of thy neighbour that made our people stand strong. It was our willingness to sacrifice ourselves in defense of that which we loved that helped our people stand apart from all others. It was our connection to our family and our tribe from which we drew our strength. As I bring this to a close, I'd like to urge you all, make the most of your time. Do not put off until tomorrow the things that can be done today. Put more stock in the people around you than the possessions and realize that each and every one of us has an instrumental role to play in those 14 words. Although at times it may feel like you, although at times it may feel like it, you do not stand alone, but rather we stand as one part of a great army. And although our greatest battles lay in front of us, our sac the sacrifices that we make shall not be in vain. Our enemies shall not overcome. A great awakening has taken place. The veil that was once over the eyes of our people has been lifted. The sins of others have become clear. And as we move forward, facing the unknown, we find that our strength lays in our unity, in our love for one another. The spirit of the diggers lives on in us. We do not enter this battle for glory or fame, but rather we enter it for our brothers, for our wives and for our children. It is them that we continue to fight. Thanks. It was a speech by my friend, Jazz Sebi, the head coach at... Uh, so that was my friend Jazz Sibi, head coach at Hard Knocks Combat. And now I'm going to play you a song of his called uh, Savage. So Jazz, take it out. And everyone else, have a good weekend. I'll see you all soon. So who wants to be king? Do you know how this works? If you want to be king, you must kill me. Take it. No? You? No, what about you? No? No? Anyone? Oh! 
Once the big game. We walk with Odin as we stroll to the this road to what fell hover. We were blessed by Thor and Robin, there we can't be in this hammer. Hit these cunts with uppercuts hard enough to make their jaw shatter. If they're getting in our way, it didn't matter, they got battered. Now we're in the gym religiously and everyone's a savage. All these men are conquerors, don't ever think they're average They've perfected all their tactics and deployed them automatic Their reaction reflects the fact that they're always getting out of They are savage You? No, what about you? No? No? Anyone? Savage Who wants to be king? We find our peace when we're in battle, so we're always on the mat. I'm happy when my hands are bloody and my eyes are turning black. The only direction we move is forward, never turning back. And when we hit, it's like a hurricane, we move like a wolf pack. When we sense a threat, then we've been trained to go on the attack. We're more comfortable on bench presses and board troops, it's a fact. For every one of us, we carry two of you upon our back. And pick up the slack for all the so called men that don't do jack. They never hit the back or Stuck a jab, these fucking cunts all suck at that They need to get some hustle back It's time to build some muscle back We're savage, give the fucking government their muscle back It's time for all the men to stand and say we had enough of that We're savage Out of ambition, but once again I had no choice As a result of other people's actions Nonetheless we're always grinding, always climbing, putting one round at a time And know that underneath the rough we are hard as fucking diamonds Good men are rare but everywhere so find and get behind them If you want to be just like them then you need to put the time in Be a savage, have a look deep into our eyes See that our fists will never lie, you make us piss we let them fly We're fucking savage, men that can inspire the inspired Retired the expired, walk on water, step through fire Fucking savage what does a king do? Yeah. He rules. Yes! Good! He rules! And as a ruler, I have the last say. We are running through the mountains while they're peeping through the curtains While they're quiet as a mouse we are causing a disturbance Keep our vision on the mission cause it fills our heart with purpose Keep on fighting for our people cause we believe that they're worth it We are savage, exasperated by the rate that they are causing damage Knowing if we don't reverse this trend it will be tragic They exaggerated all the facts and woke your beast while they were ratted Now we're back to claim the throne that we once sat at this hero that comes in the Valhalla does not lament his death. I shall not enter Odin's hall with fear. I shall wait for my sons to dream. And when they do, I will bask in their tears of triumph. The Aesir will welcome me. My death comes without apology. And I welcome the Valkyries to summon me. Summon me.